Uh, I'd like to start just by saying I think St. John Fisher played an excellent game. I mean, their their serving pass was was outstanding. Uh, they really put a lot of pressure on us with the serving, and uh, broke us down in places where uh, we thought we were pretty solid coming in. And uh, then their block uh, behind that did a really good job of forcing our hitters into uncomfortable positions and taking tough swings. Coach, you look at a game like this. You have 32 ties and, and 12 lead changes. And, you know, every point mattered. What went right for St. John Fisher versus what went wrong for you guys in, in kind of some of those 50-50 plays that went their way tonight? You know, I, I'd actually say most of the 50-50 plays uh, I thought broke, broke in our direction. I thought in the second set and in the fourth set we, we had some break for us. Uh, I thought there were a couple of hustle plays that we missed on that, that I'm a little disappointed we didn't go after as, as hard as we could have. Um, and a few times where, you know, we weren't transitioning with the same kind of thoughtfulness that I think, I think we could put forth. But, Otherwise, uh, you know, they, they took some tentative swings in certain moments. We took some aggressive swings in certain moments. So I, I was very, uh, I didn't think uh, the, the fates were against us too. Jefferson, double-double, 17 kills, 17 digs. What was working for you tonight offensively that really kind of helped sustain offensive momentum for, for Vassar? I think all those digs came at one point. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think I was just getting great balls from Dan, our setter. Um, that was some of the best setting he's done, at least to me, all season. And we were talking, we were looking at the stats. Matt had like six assists off of 10 out of system sets, which is incredible. That means he's putting the ball in a great location for me to take swings at. Um, and then my middles are getting good draws. I was hitting against single or like one and a half blocks for a lot of the night. So. I think that's, that's a lot of the reason for the success. Sure. Coach, when you look at something that was just said about the number of assists on out of system balls and things like that, those things don't show up in this in the score sheet but per se, right? Right. Would you say that you felt confident or proud of kind of the way the team was able to do so many things tonight that didn't show up in the stat sheet? Yeah, I mean, I, the interesting thing with out of system balls is I thought every time we got a good out of system set that our attackers were ready to be aggressive, kick the table. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and so that was something that I was really pleased with. I just thought, you know, in our transition, I, we, we still had opportunities to get a ball high and, and go after it. And a few of those I, I would have wanted us to get back. Uh, at the same time, it's something we put a lot of attention into this year, and you could see that guys were ready and prepared to, to be aggressive and, and go after it. And really, I mean, how many great swings? Kevin, Kevin, for example, had so many great swings today that just the, their defense would pick up, or they would they would make a, a, a great chicken wing save out of, and then transition it back at us. So uh, that's that's a little bit unlucky, but uh, um, you know, really, really pleased that we took those swings. Kevin, you take that first set off the table where there was, you know, a, a, I guess six points in this game is a comfortable margin. How was Vassar able to really kind of chip away at that and and really kind of take some take control of the points at various points of the match. Right, so yeah, we talked a lot about on our team of taking our time between points and coming in on the huddles and just shedding the point, whether it be like a big kill, a big block, or an error, or something like that. Really just focusing on moving forward and you know, taking our time, so. And how big was that energy that you guys were getting from the sidelines to kind of keep you in the game, keep momentum going, respond to big plays? Yeah, I think both the bench and the crowd, and especially in this gym, were making a lot of noise, and it really helped us mm -hmm. build that momentum and sustain it for some of Coach, some big losses from the team last year, obviously, but a lot of great things happened this year. Um, overall, wh what direction, how bright is the future for Vassar, and how much you're going to miss the seniors this year? You know, uh, I mean, George and Dan have set a great tone this year. You know, it is tough sometimes to lose, you know, someone who's been running the tempo all year long, and Dan had some injuries early on, so... I think we, we struggled to get uh, our setting groove figured out. Um, but once we did, I thought Dan Dan really won that spot out and did a great job there. And then George has been a little bit nagged with some injuries too. I think he's going to enjoy a good six months uh, not taking swings. Uh, and I hope at Utah for grad school that they drag him back on the court. Uh, but uh, those those two guys really, really led us in a lot of ways. I mean, if you look at George's line, you know, it's 10 to 20 hitting 400. I mean, that's an outstanding performance for an outside hitter. Uh, it's, it definitely shows the consistency he brought to the game. And gentlemen, what are you looking forward to about the future of Vassar Men's Volleyball? Uh, um, 
Well, I'm looking forward to a couple of things. First, that I think these past couple of weeks have given us a lot to really focus on both on the court and off the court, and what we can do to prepare for these big matches, and how we can prepare and practice for uh, these big matches. And I'm also excited to see us my senior year, so I hope to do better than we did last year and the year before, too, and kind of go from there. Yeah, I think we have a, a lot of bright things um, for next year, and I'm disappointed that we sent our seniors off in that way this year, but I'm looking forward to, for, uh, to getting something better for you. So. I'll tell you, in a year where Kevin started setting and, uh, and where I had team after team come up to me, uh, coach after coach come up to me afterwards and say, who's that number 12? Where did he come from? He was here last year too, taking great swings, but this year was a coming of age a little bit, an opportunity to be able to show that he can consistently generate offensively for this team. And, uh, so I think that gives you a lot of hope for next year, uh, knowing that we're holding on to that. Is that coming of age a, a kind of a bright spot as a coach when you kind of see kids do that? Oh, absolutely. You know, you're I, I, honestly, I mean, Dan, it was such a great thing to see him come of age this year because he'd been behind Zach for a few years. And so him getting that opportunity to run the show and really, really own it was great. Kind of every guy on this team, I think, is having, you know, transformative moments uh, all, all by their own doing. I mean, as a coach, I, I guess I don't take a ton of pride in it because I think we're creating a good environment, but that environment's being created by them. You know, their, their, their leadership, their team play right, is, what's, is what's helping drive us along. I'm, I'm just hoping not to get in the way too often and, and maybe occasionally steer the ship when it hits, a, hits an iceberg. Well, congratulations on a great season, gentlemen. Thanks.